Now, dear friends, you know that we have often turned to this scripture, 1 John, third chapter and the eighth verse. He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. There are various aspects of these works of the devil manifest today. I do not know the variety of beliefs, the variety of fads that are going around. You know, some of these thoughts that are proclaimed and and people get excited about them. One used to hear of that hodgepodge, which was called New Age. <laughs> they have already found it to be as old as the devil. <laughs> Certainly they have no right to call it New age. It is ushered in nothing but fresh confusion. Now listen. Some of these things, I wish we could encounter them with the same kind of attitude with which Elijah encountered them. You know, as he sat and told these priests of Baal, Probably he is out hunting or he is out or peradventure he sleepeth. So you better shout a little more loudly. Well, you know, with such a challenge before him that Elijah could have such composure and assurance. Boy, I wish I would have that. That certainty. Mark you in a smaller measure. We have got to encounter various challenges and I constantly encounter them. And the demons do test us out, you know. They want to see if the preacher has guts, sometimes they would almost come to threaten the preacher. Well, you just, one has to stand their ground. Especially we stand upon the blood and promises of God, the blood of Jesus and the promises of God. And therefore, we have nothing to be afraid. But, you know, constantly this is taking place. And what uh, gives me a lot of concern today is that there is such good preaching in many places where the fellowship has centers. And godly people who fast and pray and preach and in certain places on Sunday our one hour broadcast is heard by so many I don't know how many million in their own language. And uh, you see, every region requires a particular emphasis. South America, Guyana, where I was recently. We are trying to impact that whole nation, small nation. 
and there are works of darkness there and somebody was writing to the press this kind of preaching or whatever is designed to overthrow our traditions what traditions heathen traditions where diabolical works are made use of to even control politicians and the politics of a nation now you know i was feeling very grieved that our little work in nigeria was somewhat left like that normally i have not done so in most of the areas where some work began hammer stroke upon hammer stroke is required to drive one nail into a required place so the word of god needs to be proclaimed it's the word of god which does it now the lord jesus christ warned us that the birds of the air meaning the demons the devil immediately carries away the word that was sown in the heart it is a serious symptom very serious symptom if the message which was received on sunday morning or well whenever did not impact the life correct error and put our feet upon non slippery ground if that does not take place what is it but just an intellectual philosophical talk what's the good of that you know anything which is prescribed by god's word will surely be effective if we confess our sins is faithful and just to forgive us our sins you know some people do not even know that they should be open that they should be that they should confess their sins and they simply think they are believers just because they joined the church now this is shocking you know and generally pastors say oh you're 13 years you're 12 you're 15 you better be baptized you see an intellectual perception in itself is not enough that's not regeneration that is why today's churches are full of people who subscribe to the truth who say yes yes that's so hallelujah praise the lord that is so they'll walk out of the church and speak 10 lies what do you mean that's a lying spirit that's not the holy spirit a woman said to me recently now she said i speak in tongues and also pray with my understanding i said all right but 
The Bible tells us, try the spirits, whether they are of God. Try the spirits. She said something, and after I have spoken in tongues, I feel so drained and powerless. I said, there's something wrong there. That's not God's spirit. That's not God's spirit. And then she added, well, there is no peace either. Now that's not God's spirit. I said, Jesus said, my peace give I unto you. Now, how many people today are just carried away by just this wave of emotion and they feel satisfied? And of course, you can fill a whole church with such people, but you are going to change nothing. Is it not alarming that the divorces within the church seem now to have exceeded the divorces outside the church? Now that's terrible. How can you call the church the church of Jesus Christ, you call it by some other name. Some pastors were driving me to a meeting and one of them said, well, I heard a speaker say, if your wife leaves you, then look around in the church for some pretty person and marry her. I said, it was that man preaching what Jesus preached? And what right has anybody to preach what Jesus did not preach? Oh my! Things have gotten so disorderly, no discipline. Christians without discipline. I can't understand. No discipline. You know, my brother who is in heaven now, Francis, when he was going to one of those cities called, which is renowned for its computer ex expertise today, Bangalore, I wondered how much can Francis do? He was a musician. He was an excellent pianist and choir master. Of course, when a, there's a very good musician, people are attracted. But I said in my heart, what can he do there? It is a tall order, that city where I, uh, myself, I had preached. I knew that it was, the powers of darkness were very strong there. But God brought him soon to the recognition that he needed much prayer and his music was not going to accomplish anything. 
Well, he insisted that people should come on time to the prayer meetings. You know, a phenomenal thing. Prayer meeting means oh, people keep drifting in and drifting out, you know, according to what they feel is their convenience. But he said, you have to be there on time. This was offensive to some people. Because the traffic there was notorious for its delays. But prayer meeting, he began to focus on the prayer meeting. You know, somehow the prayer meeting has become a Bible class these, these days. Or it has become a gossip gallery today. People sit around and gossip and they over the cup of tea or over their cookies and cakes, they will spend far more time than they have spent in prayer. You know, things like that speak of total lack of discipline and an complete disorderliness. And then we want to accomplish great things. How can we? The prayer meeting must be strong. You know, my dear friends, my strength and energy is being tested these days to the extreme point. After a travel, intercontinental travel, you know, you sit cooped up like this very often, whatever it is, after such a long travel across the Atlantic or the Indian, the Asian mass, 12 hours, 13 hours, you're you have arrived. One of the first things I do is if the prayer meeting is on or the fasting prayer is going on, I pull off my tie and my coat, hand it over to the one who receives me and I go into the prayer meeting. To me, it is very important. But, as I told you already, my endurance is being tested to the extreme point these days, as I have no time to give even to jet lag. Now, he was revealed to destroy the works of the devil. I do not know at what point some of the various discussions in Britain today are. Something which came to my notice, you know, I have not been reading the papers for a few days now, several days, no time, whatever. Uh, however, is the primate or the Archbishop of Canterbury raising a new issue, a constitutional change, what of what is supposed to be completely outdated. One of those miracles in history, even the Reformation which came to Britain, 
was only a partial reformation. It was based largely upon Henry VIII's marriage. He wanted to die, divorce his wife and marry Anne Boleyn, isn't it? Whatever. And so he declared himself as the head of the church. Why, a very tall order, really. He declared himself as the head of the church anyway and got his annulment or proclaimed his annulment was promptly excommunicated by the Roman church, a blessing in disguise. Now, whatever it is, he was not a man noted for godliness or saintliness. What was he to spearhead the Reformation? There itself, there was an intrinsic weakness. You say, however, when the court favored this, and this was a move of the government and the court, it passed muster. What happened? Now, at long last, When people say, we are going to disrupt that position, one thing is, the government, unfortunately, is not the best guide or even judge of character to appoint the right bishops or the right administrators of the church. But now if you are going to bring up this issue into the public, everybody will say, scrap it. We have got our own religious heads. They too must be given voting powers in the House of Lords. Or the upper house. So, we are a multicultural land. So, what is it really designed to do? It is designed to eliminate Christ from the Constitution. Now, that is a very serious move. And it is going to be embraced by the bulk of this nation. And who would be most forward to do it? They would say, oh, this is another big step in the right direction. And we can soon bring all the Middle Eastern codes of dress and customs and slowly enforce it upon this nation. We do have the rights. Christ has become inconsequential. Now these are works of the devil, you see. And so many people don't care, couldn't care less. You mean to say such sleepy Christians? For one thing, I have found that many of the immigrants into America have no idea that America came out of the relocation of a church 
which had to leave England locate itself in Holland and eventually relocate in America. Justice followed Jesus in freedom. You see, you couldn't imagine a people crossing the Atlantic to those barren regions. That is the Plymouth Settlement. And today, a lot of fellows go there just to make money. And the whole land is collapsing. Character has vanished. Money is the, money is the going coin. And what does every coin in America bear? In God we trust. Same here. I see that many people do not know English history. They don't know the martyrs who died for the truth, who stood for righteousness. They simply don't know. All that they are making is a little pie of money. That's all they care. They don't care that martyr blood was shed here in Britain for the truth. See, and when these ancient, you may call it traditions, I am not a traditionalist, I don't care for the old heathen traditions, but such cultural traits that arose from the scripture. Lying is lying. I wonder if every child in Britain knows that lying is lying, but they see mothers lying, fathers lying. And worse, they say the bedroom door is open. And we see what our fathers are doing with all kinds of strangers. You see, I'm not talking about mere tradition, but there were certain things that were simply not done because they were not right. Now the distinction between right and wrong is gone. And everybody thinks that's okay. So lies, cheating, cheating in examinations, it's become so prevalent. So the teacher can't control the class. Half the children come from single parent families. Or families which have two poor five dads. I don't know which dad is called mom. But anyway, they don't dress like a mom anyway. But total absurdity. And when these normal values 
that bring some order and structure into society, into family, are being washed out. What do we care? The Christian church is going on. The offertory is taken. Please give generously to the poor God who has fallen into days of poverty these days. Nonsense. God does not require your generosity or mine. Look at that. And these are the works of darkness proliferating, and these are the ways in which our churches function. And we don't seem to bother in the least. It is only that which is, which has got sacrifice in it that brings a blessing. If a man comes to me and says, I'll give you 10 million. Oh, I have got a couple of billions and I'm going to give you 10 million. Oh, it's kind of small change for me anyway. Here you are. I say, keep your 10 million. It is the content of faith. It is the element of sacrifice. You see, folks, standards are gone. And nobody is bothered. Oh, God said to Isaiah, lift up your voice like a trumpet and show my people their sin. You know, everybody likes to gloss over. You know, that's my brother. That's my uncle. That's my somebody else. You know, folks, when one has to stand for righteousness in his own family, it is tough. But righteousness is not negotiable. We have to stick by it, stand by it. Are we going to be those that destroy the works of the devil in Jesus' name? May God really help us to bind these forces of darkness that are rampaging and ravaging the nation. Let us pray. Gracious Father, what Lilliputians we seem to be. Regular Lilliputians. Spiritual dwarfs. Myself included. How little we are doing to destroy these works of darkness. Forgive us, Lord, forgive us. Please, Lord, let our trust be in you and in your word rather than the riches and glamour around us. Oh, give to us simple hearts, dear Lord. We see the simplicity of the disciples. But today it is a race keeping up with the Joneses. You know, somebody has purchased this and somebody has bought that. Somebody is making so much. Someone else has got such a pile of investments. Oh, 
This is uh, the present challenge to many people. But, O oh Lord, I thank you, the poor of the world, rich in faith, we are still seeing the poor of the world, rich in faith, are still alive and kicking. They are able to do things for you. Help us, Lord. Money shall never be our trust. Oh, teach us, Lord, have mercy upon old England. Lord, there has been a measure of truth and honoring God. We need another sovereign who would go up to the preacher after the preaching of the second coming and say, if Jesus comes during my time on the throne of England, I would put the throne of England at his feet. Oh God, we need such rulers. We need righteous people in Parliament. Oh, my Father, let not this land be filled with the howls from the minarets and the cries to the idols. and the threats and the terror that arises from these misguided, misdirected people. Oh, my Father, this inability to present Jesus seems like a grave failure. I can't think of a more serious failure. I can't say I am a disciple of Jesus and yet I cannot show the living Christ to you. Oh, my Father, forgive us. Let Christ be seen. Let Christ be preeminent. Let Christ be manifest. Not just our vanity, our show, our talk. Please, Lord, cause us to have that one desire to lift up Jesus. Have mercy on this nation. At a time when even the token lip service that is given to Jesus is sought to be wiped away by changes in the law. Please, Father, speak to this nation. In Jesus' holy name, amen.